Is supercharging my Toyota Tacoma even enough? I've been looking at the Magnuson superchargers and yeah, I'm not quite sure. Cold start. That's right, is the Magnuson Supercharger enough for me and my Toyota Tacoma? You know, I've been thinking about this because I would like to put a supercharger on this truck. So today, I just, I went out, took a look at the specs on it, you know, because I was kind of thinking of maybe doing it myself, right? So here are the deets, the details on the Magnuson Supercharger. First of all, it's not cheap for this truck and this is just the parts, right? $6,500 and $65. Wow, I was thinking more in the, I don't know, $4,500 to $5,000 range, something like that. $6,500, uh, not cheap. So what do you get? Now, before I go on to that, let me tell you, that's $65.65 plus install. So you're gonna pay probably at least I don't know, another $1,500, $2,000 maybe, something like that to have it installed. So you're looking at 8,500 bucks. Man, that's a, that's a bit of coin. So anyway, what would I get for it, right? Now, according to Magnuson, it would yield 370 plus horsepower and let's see, 330 plus foot pounds of torque at the crank. Now. Comparing that to what the Toyota Tacoma is currently rated at, you would gain 92 horsepower uh, and 65 foot-pounds of torque. Now that's at the crank. So what are we really concerned with? Well, me, I'm concerned about what I get to the wheels, right? I mean, I want that oomph at the wheels. I don't really care what's going on in between. I want it to go. So what do you get? Well, they say you get 300 horsepower or 308 horsepower uh, at the wheel, at the rear wheels they specify, and 270 foot-pounds of torque. You know, stock is 278 horsepower, right? So you're talking about, what is it, 22, 20, 30? 30 horsepower increase at the wheel? I don't know, I'm guessing that the stock setup is probably less than that at the wheel. They're probably giving you the at the crank number, but either way, 30 horsepower increase 
and it's 260 foot-pounds of torque stock. So you're getting 10, 10 foot-pounds increase uh, at the wheel. You know, you're really gonna even notice that. You know, man, I, again, I don't know what the rating is at the wheel. I'm guessing that Toyota's numbers are at the crank, right? So perhaps it, it would be quite a bit more, I don't know. So then one starts to think, well, geez, you know, I'm spending 8,500 bucks and really, you know, I don't know that you're gonna get that much. I don't know that you're gonna really feel it a lot. I do think you would feel it. I do think it would be noticeable, but I'm not sure that it's gonna be $8,500 noticeable. You know what I mean? Now, the other thing is, I mentioned the install. It would be a fun project, I think. They claim that it's bolt-on. Now, I don't know if bolt-on means that it's bolt-on for a certified mechanic uh, with all of the right tools and knowledge and, and equipment, you know, the computer, the software, all that stuff that you, you might need, um, possibly things to run out the engine on, things like that or whether they really mean that it's uh, bolt-on for your common Joe. Rob Motive, me, your common Joe. I mean, can I just whip out, you know, the socket set, maybe a, an Allen wrench, a screwdriver or two, and realistically be able to put this thing on myself and have it work? Um, I did notice in some of the verbiage that they have on their site, they mentioned that there would be different, a different setup required in essence, without going into all kinds of technical detail, but a different setup required if you have uh, modifications done on your truck. Now, I don't have any real mechanical modifications. I mean, I have the cold air intake. I don't know if you'd really call that a, a big time mechanical uh, mod, but uh, I do have it. But they go on to talk about uh, the wheels and tires if you've changed out the wheels and tires. And I'm sure that's gonna figure in as far as, as weight goes and, and what your truck needs to, to carry and pull around, right? Because their numbers are based on a stock truck with just stock wheels and tires, nothing added, right? Now, I don't really dig that too much because who out there is gonna put a supercharger on their truck that probably still has the OEM or original setup as far as wheels and tires go. Now I do know they can't account for everything, right? I mean, there's a myriad of different wheel and tire setups that, that you can put on uh, that are going to reduce or detract from the power of the truck. So I understand that. But from my perspective, it's kind of a drag that I guess it would be a bit of an unknown going in because I don't know how much the setup that I currently have would reduce those numbers. And let's face it, it, they would reduce those numbers a bit. I mean, if you're gonna have the added weight like I do on the truck, you're not gonna get the same specs or the same results out of that supercharger. Now, there is one other thing uh, that doesn't really have anything to do with power um, that attracts me to the supercharger, and that's that whine. Now, I don't know if many of you out there have heard the supercharger whine. If you haven't, um, Google it or YouTube it uh, because it's awesome. It's intoxicating. I've driven a few supercharged vehicles in my time, and I got to say that whine is probably up there with the exhaust note in the cold air intake that I, sound, that I get right now as far as the sound goes. Now, I'm not saying that that supercharger wine is worth 8,500 bucks without the power. It's not. I would never put a supercharger on the truck if the end result wasn't going to be a substantial increase in power. And I think the, the go forward for me, if I get more serious about this, would be to contact Magnuson. Or Magnuson, if you're out there and you're watching this, respond to the video. But it would be to contact Magnuson just to, to find out about those couple of things. One, is it truly a common Joe bolt-on application or do you have to be a more skilled mechanic to do the job with the right tools? And 
is it really going to provide that much of an increase, enough of an increase, uh, to warrant spending that kind of money and going through the whole install process? One other thing I'll mention, they do say that it should be able to be done uh, within a day. Now, that means to me that it's probably just a bit more than a simple bolt-on because, you know, to take more than a day, eight hours to do, that's a little more involved than just a simple bolt-on, I think. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Would you spend $8,500 to attain the numbers that I mentioned in the beginning there? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.